When you think about multi-level marketing, your mind probably conjures up images of middle-aged white women throwing online Facebook parties where they try to sell overpriced beauty or health products to their friends and family. You wouldn't be wrong to imagine it this way, but if you also thought of a destructive cult in which women are coerced, branded, and forced to be sex slaves, you wouldn't be wrong either. Yes, there at one time existed a multi-level marketing company that was this sinister, and it was called Nexium. Nexium has since been exposed as a human trafficking ring, completely shut down, and its leader, Keith Rainier, has been convicted of racketeering and sex trafficking. It should be noted that Nexium is an outlier in the MLM world. No other MLM company that I know of has morphed into a full-fledged sex cult, but I would argue that the building blocks that were used to construct Nexium into what it ultimately became exist in every MLM company. In fact, these building blocks have to exist in order to make multi-level marketing work. MLMs rely on coercive tactics to draw on willing participants and then keep them in despite the overwhelming evidence that MLMs don't work and have never worked. Nexium's self-proclaimed prophet Keith Rainier had all the makings of your typical cult leader, and unfortunately, this is also common of many MLM founders. Rainier was an obvious narcissist that knew how to manipulate those around him. He was obsessed with the teachings of Scientology, neuro-linguistic programming, and with the structure of multi-level marketing companies. He also claimed that he could read by the time he was two, had learned college-level math before high school, and had a genius-level IQ. These claims are eerily similar to outrageous claims that have been made by other cult leaders, such as Scientologist leader L. Ron Hubbard's claim that he was awarded over 20 combat medals, including being awarded two Purple Hearts, even though he had never seen a day in combat. Prior to establishing Nexium, Rainier was to no surprise involved with another MLM company, Amway. Rainier took note of how Amway operated and decided to start his own MLM company called Consumers Byline, which was essentially just a buying club. Consumers Byline was extremely short-lived and was forced to close its doors after 25 separate investigations were opened under suspicion that the company was actually operating as a classic pyramid scheme. As a side note, I have been studying MLMs and their tactics for a while now, and I have noted the specific trend of MLM founders learning the tricks of the trade in another MLM before founding their own. Basically, they wise up to the fact that only those at the very top of the pyramid get rich, and they decide to start their own MLM with them at the top to monopolize on this. After Consumer's byline failed, Rainier tried to break into the supplements industry and founded his second MLM he named the National Health Network. This MLM also completely flopped, but they say that the third time's a charm, and when Rainier founded his third and final MLM, Nexium, he really struck gold. Rainier co-founded Nexium in the 1990s along with Nancy Salzman, a psychiatric nurse that was trained in hypnosis and neuro-linguistic programming. Nexium operated as a multi-level marketing company that sold executive training courses they called Executive Success Programs. Nexium was basically just a self-help group where a member could make a commission by signing up others for training courses. According to Nexium's website, which has since been taken down, it was a community guided by humanitarian principles that seek to empower people and answer important questions about what it means to be human. Whatever that means. Many of the tools, or what Rainier and Salzman referred to as technologies, that were used during the training sessions were kept secret from the outside world. Members had to shell out thousands and thousands of dollars for the training courses and sign a non-disclosure agreement that legally kept them from revealing to the public what was taught by Rainier. Even though much of what was taught by Nexium has been kept under wraps, a cult specialist named Rick Allen Ross did acquire one of their company handbooks in the early 2000s and exposed many of the group's teachings on his website. Honestly, most of what was contained in Nexium's teachings is just total word salad, with phrases like enhance your capacity for joy and maximize your potential thrown around to make the company sound legitimate. So one would say authenticity is being as you are and expressing as you are, at least to some degree. Mm -hmm. And as you are is, of course, the sum of your whole past. So when someone's being authentic, you get the feeling that not only that there's a person there in the moment, but somehow you, you reach into their very essence and you, you meet a unique individual. It seems that the core of Nexium's teachings was a technology they called rational inquiry. Rational inquiry taught that success and joy in life could only be found through consistent thinking, purging the self of parasitic thoughts and envy-based feelings, and realizing that there are no true victims. The group also used what they called exploration of meaning, in which a senior member would delve into a new member's childhood memories or trauma in order to cure their current psychological ailments. Interwoven into the nonsensical New Agey teachings of the group were extreme cult-like practices. 
Members had secret handshakes and sashes that signified rank in the group. Many members had godlike reverence for Rainier, who was referred to as Vanguard, and the group celebrated Rainier's birthday with a week-long festival called V-Week. Some of the group even believed that Rainier had mystical powers, such as the ability to change the weather, and anyone that questioned the teachings of the group were labeled suppressives. If you think Nexium is bad enough already, oh, it gets a whole lot worse. Nexium had been in and out of the spotlight for years, with many, including ex-members, referring to the group as a cult. But in 2017, rumors started swirling that a secret female group existed within Nexium called DOS. DOS was an acronym for a Latin phrase that literally translates to master over the obedient slave women. It wasn't a secret in Nexium that Rainier had peculiar teachings about relationships between men and women. He taught that men were inherently promiscuous and should seek polyamorous relationships, while women are inherently monogamous and should be loyal to one man only. So women were expected to stay faithful to their husbands while their husbands were basically given a free pass to sleep around with whoever they wanted. Got it. Rainier himself had multiple girlfriends, even though he claimed to be celibate. In October of 2017, the New York Times came out with an article featuring Sarah Edmondson, an actress that had been involved with Nexium since 2005. In the article, Edmondson broke to the public that yes, DOS did in fact exist within Nexium. Edmondson described how she had been invited into the group and told that even though DOS stood for master over the obedient slave woman, that it was more of a mentor-student type relationship. She was told that the purpose of DOS was to empower women and provide them with the tools to become masters of their own lives. Edmondson only knew the identity of her direct mentor, or her upline, and was told that other participants of DOS had to be kept secret. Her mentor then required her to hand over life-ruining collateral in the form of a written confessional and sexually explicit photos that would be used against her if she ever spoke out about the existence of the group. It was later revealed that the concept of collateral wasn't exclusive to DOS, but had been used in lesser extremes and Nexium as a whole to keep members involved. Edmondson stated that she finally came to her senses about the group when her upline instructed her to take part in a commitment ritual. Initially, Edmondson was told that during the ritual, she was just going to be getting a tattoo of a Latin symbol. But on the night of the ritual, she ended up being blindfolded, stripped naked in a room with other women of DOS, and branded with a cauterizing pen. According to Edmondson, the branding took almost an hour to complete, and the pain was worse than childbirth. She said that while she was indeed traumatized by the experience, she also felt like the branding bonded the women of DOS together. It wasn't until she went home that night and looked at the brand in the mirror that it finally hit her what actually happened to her. The brand wasn't a Latin symbol as she had been told, but were the initials of Keith Rainier and his right-hand woman, actress Allison Mack. The reality was she had been branded as property of Keith Rainier. DOS was not a women's empowerment group, but was in fact a sex cult that was run by a sex-crazed sociopath. Nexium began to crumble under the mass media attention they received from the story. Investigations were launched into Nexium and many of its leaders, and what authorities discovered about the group was shocking. Not only were women being branded in DOS, but many women and one underage girl were coerced into having sex with Rainier and told it would help ease their childhood trauma of rape and molestation. If a woman happened to get pregnant by Rainier, they were urged to have an abortion. One victim stated that she was groomed into being one of Rainier's many girlfriends, but then started having feelings for another man, which Rainier considered an ethical breach. As punishment, she was locked into a room for two years without any contact with the outside world. She was required to write an apology letter to Rainier every day and was told she would be let out once Rainier felt her apology was sincere. There has been so much more that has been uncovered about DOS, like women being beaten and starved, that I could literally make an hour-long video just discussing all these horrific details. If you are interested in learning more about this call, there are some great resources, such as CBC's investigative podcast series Uncover, Escaping Nexium, and Sarah Edmondson's book, Scarred. The good news is Keith Rainier, along with co-founder Nancy Salzman and Allison Mack, have all been arrested for their involvement. Rainier has been found guilty and should be sentenced for his crimes in early 2020. He faces a minimum of 15 years up to life in prison. Earlier in this video, I mentioned that Rainier was obsessed with the structure of multi-level marketing. I mean, he did ultimately decide to structure his cult around the MLM business model. So the question has to be asked, what is inherent to multi-level marketing that lends itself to destructive cult behavior? In my next video, I will explain exactly why MLMs easily turn into cults and how Nexium may not be the last MLM turned sex cult. As a disclaimer, please do not go to your friends and family that are involved in MLMs and accuse them of being in a sex cult. 
It's just not true. While MLMs use the same tactics that many cults do, that's not to say every MLM is a destructive cult or that everyone involved demonstrates cult-like behavior. Thanks for watching and if you liked this video, please subscribe.